What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about pulse width modulation. So what is pulse width modulation? Pulse width modulation allows us to use digital signal to control analog devices. This potentiometer is modulating the resistance, which in turn controls current passing through it, which then controls the voltage going into the LED. That is because voltage equals current times resistance. The problem with using resistors to modulate the voltage going into the LED is that resistors dissipate all of their unused energy as heat. They don't really not use the energy going into them to bring down the voltage. They just convert it into heat. Now let's take a look at this light bulb. Every time we press this button, we send three volts to turn it on. When I let go of the button, the output goes back to low and the light bulb turns back off. There is no current or heat being wasted while the light bulb is in the off position. If I press this button faster, the process will continue, but at higher frequencies. The magic here is that if I was to continue increasing the frequency enough, the bulb will continue to switch on and off, but our eyes will no longer see the difference between on and off. Instead, we will see a variety of brightnesses depending on the amount of time the bulb spent in the on position for each cycle. This is what we call a square wave. The amount of time spent in the high position per cycle is referred to as the duty cycle. A 100% duty cycle means that the signal was high 100% of the time each cycle. A 50% duty cycle means that it was only high for half of the time each cycle. Okay, now let's look at this 12 volt LED. As you can see right now, it's a 0% duty cycle. There is nothing being red here and the LED bulb is off. Now let's start increasing the duty cycle with a pulse width modulation. As you can see right here, it's about 30% duty cycle and the LED bulb is already starting to get brighter. Sorry if I'm blinding you guys with this really bright LED bulb. Okay, now let's continue and let's go to a 50% duty cycle. And as you can see, the LED bulb again gets a little bit brighter and you can see that the voltage uh, going towards the bulb right now is averaging about 5.84 volts. So this is what the LED bulb would be at or would look like if it was being input in a DC input of 5.84 volts. So that's pretty much what the duty cycle does. It gives you a 12 volt straight DC input. Since you turn the bulb on and off at certain increments of time, then it actually averages out to the percentage of that duty cycle. So as you can see, if I lower the duty cycle, now I'm probably like around 10%. Um, this oscilloscope doesn't really read the percentages too well when it's too high or too low, but I'm averaging about 1.28 volts. And now let's increase it all the way to almost 100%. So as you can see here, I am pretty close, maybe like around 85 or 90. And the average volt is about 10.07 volts. So this is a 12 volt LED. When you bring it all the way up, um, it doesn't quite go all the way to 12 volts because it, it is an LED, so there is a forward voltage drop. But that is what is awesome about the duty cycle. If you were to plug in that LED to a one volt source, like you see right here, we are averaging one volt to this LED, you would not be able to get your LED to turn on. And that is because there is a forward voltage of an LED that you must surpass in order for you to turn on the LED. However, with pulse width modulation, you can average one volt, but that is because it's only an average. You're still inputting 12 volts just very rapidly, so you really can't see the light turning on and off, but you are still inputting 12 volts. So the LED will turn on and it will dim to what it would supposed to look like if it was only one volt. So that is all I have for you guys today on pulse width modulation. 
On my next video, I will be creating a circuit that generates a square wave with a variable duty cycle so that you can control the voltage using the pulse width modulation that we just talked about. See you guys next time. And until then, don't forget to write down in the comment section any questions or comments that you might have about this video or future upcoming videos. Peace.